It is Wednesday, 6.01 p.m., April 19th, 2023. My name is Kessie Ian Anderson. Welcome back to another edition of Heresiarch. In this episode, I'm talking about the Judeo-Communist infiltration of Asia. You have a gentleman named Sidney Shapiro, an American Jew. He was a high-ranking member of communist Red China's government. Another gentleman, Israel Epstein, a naturalized Chinese citizen and a member of the Communist Party of China. He's the Jew responsible for the Cultural Revolution which exterminated Chinese culture and killed up to five million innocent people. He wrote Mao's Little Book, which was the premise on which the Cultural Revolution was designed to be waged on the Chinese population. Jews are not just dual citizens of America and Israel. They have dual citizenship worked out in many other nations for their operatives. Jews were behind the rise to power of Mao Zedong, the communist dictator of China, who tortured and murdered tens of millions of Chinese during his brutal reign. Again, Sidney Shapiro, an American Jew, was in charge of China's propaganda organ. And then again, Israel Epstein, Mao's Minister of Appropriations Finance. That's from 2012, 9-11, Enemies Foreign and Domestic by Edward Hendry. Whatever the price of the Chinese Revolution, it has obviously succeeded, not only in producing more efficient and dedicated administration, but also in fostering high morale and community of purpose. The social experiment in China under Chairman Mao's leadership is one of the most important and successful in human history. David Rockefeller. Stalin was also a Zionist. He was the son of Baron Edmund de Rothschild and the brother of Chairman Mao. New Zealand, A Blackmailer's Guide by Greg Hollett. The covert Jewish control of Mao and the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, explains why convicted Jewish spy Jonathan Pollard, found guilty of stealing thousands of classified documents from the Defense Department where he worked, gave these materials to his masters, the Israeli Mossad operating in the USA. The Israelis, in turn, transferred these valuable military secrets straight to red Chinese dictators in Beijing. Pollard, a Jew born in Galveston, Texas, sits in a federal prison today, or did. Recently, when Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu came to America, he visited Pollard in prison and assured the despicable turncoat Israeli spy that the Israeli government was working behind the scenes with Obama's White House to pardon the convicted spy. Meanwhile, Pollard is a national hero in Israel, honored for stealing America's most precious military secrets, which Israel gave to communist China. Fast forward, Pollard was released on November 20th, 2015 in accordance with federal guidelines in place at the time of his sentencing. On November 20th, 2020, the parole expired and all restrictions were removed. On December 30th, 2020, Pollard and his wife moved to Israel on board a private jet owned by U.S. billionaire Sheldon Adelson, who he died, I believe, in 2021. And Sheldon Adelson funds the Rhino sides along with the Koch brothers as well as he gave huge donations to Trump. So control all sides. You have Soros on one side, Adelson on the other. Soros pays for Democrats, Adelson pays for rhinos. And once Pollard and his wife got there, they were greeted on the arrival by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. So the Communist Party in China was created by the Jewish Communist International in a meeting in Shanghai between Jews from Russia and Chinese Jews. In order to advance their interests, Jewish Lenin and Trotsky sent Jew Grigory Voitinsky to China to make contact with leftist intellectuals like Jew Cheng Duzhou. Politically, Chen advocated the Trotskyist theory of Marxism. Voitinsky was sent over to China by the calm intern chairman, a Jew named Ovse Gershon Aronovich, Radomilsky Affelbaum, also known as Grigory Yevsevich Zinoviev. 
Zinoviev was the longtime head of the Communist International and was a stooge of Lenin. During Lenin's illness, Zinoviev, his sidekick Kamenev, and Joseph Stalin, note Stalin was Jewish, formed a ruling triumvirate, or Troika, in the Communist Party, playing a key role in the marginalization of Leon Trotsky. Chen decided to run a special edition of Marxism. The edition of this magazine was the most detailed analysis of Marxism then published in China and achieved wide readership due to the journal's popularity. In 1921, Chen Dujou, Li Dajiao, and other prominent revolutionary leaders founded the Communist Party of China. Chen Dujou was the dean of Beijing University. Chen had participated in the Xinhai Revolution in 1911, which overthrew the Qing Dynasty and established the Republic of China. So how did so many Jews land in Shanghai and end up later in Hong Kong to aid the communist takeover? So this Chen guy, he was a Chinese Jew, first educated at Yali School in the provincial capital of Changsha and later Rothschild run Yale in China University. Later, he was sent on a Jewish scholarship to Munich University in 1926, where he received his PhD in political economics in 1932 and a crash course in Marxism. Dr. Ho Feng Shan was planted by Rothschilds as the Chinese Consul General in Vienna from May of 1938 to May of 1940 when Jews wanted a safe sanctuary before and during the Second World War. Our Jew Dr. Ho issued visas to Jews left, right, and center, more than 21,000 visas. And part of this, in my opinion, was to send as many Jews as possible into China to spread communism. So 1949, on October 1st, Mao Zedong declares the founding of the People's Republic of China in Tiananmen Square, Beijing. He is funded by Rothschild created communism in Russia and also the following Rothschild agents, Solomon Adler, a former United States Treasury official who was a Soviet spy. Israel Epstein, the son of a Jewish Bolshevik imprisoned by the Tsar in Russia for trying to foment a revolution there. And Frank Koh, a leading official of the Rothschild owned IMF. Mao would genocide 70 million innocent Chinese people under his rule, mainly to destroy traditional Chinese culture. Like with Christianity, any practitioners of spiritual systems were outlawed, killed and put into gulags, which was a slow death, and communistic systems were the new culture of control. With China under their flag, Tibet was next on the list as being the last bastion of spiritual knowledge and histories of humanity. All the Jewish systems seek to remove spiritual knowledge from Gentiles and keep it in the hands of the Jewish elite. This is a major part of their domestication program. A century and more before the Rothschilds and the Solomon brothers used their control of England and its control of India to run the opium trade into China, killing tens of thousands and wrecking entire communities to the point the Chinese fought the opium wars to try and throw the Jewish dealers out. Which if you know your history, there is a term 110. You might want to look into that to figure out what that means. Now, Chinese Jews, a Jesuit missionary going upon some occasion into the province of Honan, found a considerable synagogue in the city of Kaifengfu. He soon became acquainted with some of its learned chiefs, who introduced him into their synagogue and showed him one of the parchments or rolls of the Pentateuch, that's the Torah in Greek, written in Hebrew, together with the books of Joshua, Judges, Samuel, King, some of the prophets and others containing their liturgy and com commentaries they owned. They had lost some of the sacred books and some of their targums or paraphrases. This loss was caused by a violent overflowing of the great river which had laid the capital wholly under the water and had damaged their Torah or roll of the Pentateuch and upon which they ordered 12 new copies to be taken from it. And then there's a quote, my elder brother, I am not yet 40 years old, but I have thought and talked much with my friends about our ancestors who were rich and numerous and who worshiped in a fine synagogue built on the land presented to them by the emperor Tai Tsi. This synagogue, you know, has been swept away by China's sorrow, the Yellow River. Our ancestors came to this land from the Northwest nearly 3000 years ago. From National Geographic, Hey Chinese Jews by Oliver Bainbridge in 1907. Chinese communism? Yes, there is Chinese communism, but it was Jewish when it started. 
So the following article by Arnold Lease is reprinted from Gothic Ripples, number 49, dated 28th of February, 1949. It shows that the seeds of Bolshevism were planted in China by Jews who also tended and trained that growth that resulted. The corruption of the regime of Chiang Kai-shek caused many of the masses in China to turn to communism for relief since Chinese communism is mixed with nationalism and discourages old Chinese curse of official corruption. But communism in China has the same dehumanizing effect on the people as it has elsewhere. It was the Sassoon family which turned the normal Chinese dislike and distrust of foreigners into hatred. David Sassoon made the opium trade in China from 1832 until he died in 1864. His family carried on the trade under our flag and made huge fortunes. The British took the blame and now the Chinese loathe us, just as we took the blame for the Jewish atrocities at Nuremberg. Spandau and elsewhere in Germany said the Germans now hate us. Backed by the Sassoons, the Shanghai Opium Monopoly existed until 1917, under the Jew Edward Ezra, its managing committee being composed entirely of Jews and Indians. Not only did the British flag protect the Sassoons in this abominable trade, which the Manchus did all they could to prevent, even to the extent of war, but also these Jews were welcomed in England instead of being ostracized. Royalty petted them, and they intermarried with Aryan aristocrats. Also remember that Judaism is matriarchal. The real bloodline goes from mother to child. Some became baronets and won a minister of the government. When the Freemasons... Freemasons, Jesuits, Shriners, all Jewish creations. Sun Yat-sen began his revolutionary movement at Canton. The Jew Morris Cohen, a British subject, became his aide-de-camp and was sent by Sun around the globe to get military experts for his revolutionary army. On Sun Yat-sen's death, on Sun Yat-sen's deathbed, this Jew was commended but to Chiang Kai-shek, and he was employed as liaison officer between the Canton government and all foreign consulates general. Cohen became known in China as Moisha, and was made military counselor to the Cantonese forces and a general, although still a British subject. As late as 1939, Cohen was traveling the high seas under the protection of our flag. The last we heard of him was, was late in 1945 when he emerged from a Japanese prisoner of war camp. The South African Sunday Express described him as the guiding genius behind the warlords of China. The Soviet Jew, Yaakov Borodin, Jacob Borodin, real name M. Grusenberg, was sent by the Kremlin with the Jew Joffe in 1923 to try and Bolshevize Yong Hatsen and became chief political advisor to the Kuomintang. His wife, a Jewish, spied in China for the Soviets. When Sun died, Borodin was left in charge and it was he who appointed Chiang Kai-shek to succeed Sun in 1926. However, in 1927, a raid was made by Cheng Tso Ling on the Soviet embassy at Beijing, which revealed the scope and extent of the Soviet plot to Bolshevize China, and the Bar Rodins were arrested and imprisoned. In 1923, the notorious Jew Trebich Lincoln, ex-MP in Britain, headed a Chinese mission to get arms for Wu Pai Fu, a warlord with a fine character but failed, probably purposely in the attempt. After that, Lincoln drifted about, too mistrusted in China for any other important role. The Soviet general B.K. Galen, who was really a Jew called Chesin and was nicknamed Blucher, accompanied the Armenian Soviet delegate Karachin to Peking, or Beijing, in 1924, where a treaty was made with Cheng Tso Ling, by which the Chinese Eastern Railway was handed over to the Soviets. This placed the movement of troops at the mercy of the Bolsheviks. The intrigues and bribery by which this surrender by Cheng Tso Ling was obtained were carried out through the medium of a Jewish timber magnate called Eskadel. Delsky. At once, the railway was placed in charge of the Jews, Gekker, Koslovsky, and Snomensky, Zemyensky. To continue with the career of General Galen, he became chief military advisor to Chiang Kai-shek in 1926. Now for the Soviet Jew, S.A. Gekker, as early as 1922, he's been a military advisor to the Mongolian Bolshevik government, and in 1924 he was made head political commissar on the eastern Ch on the Chinese Eastern Railway aforesaid. This appointment was at the hands of the Jew M.D. Lashowitz, who was president of the Board of Railway Control in Moscow. Nor must the Jew A. Joffe be forgotten. We have already met him as head of the Soviet mission to Sun Yat-sen when, with the Jew Jacob Borodin, he tried to develop Sovietism. Later, he became political advisor to Chiang Kai-shek in 1926 and organized the Red Section of the Kuomintang. 
High up in the political department of the Red Army in China were also the two Jews, W.N. Levichev and J.B. Gamarnik, who in 1936 was its head. The Nanking Ministry of Finance has always been dominated by Jews, Viz Khan L. Rajman and R. Haas. In England, the Jew Billmeyer helped with his merchant fleet to take Soviet arms to China in 1938. Finally, the Jew Ben Kaiser, USA, was appointed head of UNRWA in China, and as everyone knows, it fell to pieces in corruption. Enough has been said to prove that every real key position in the process of the Bolshevik destruction of China has been Jewish. Arnold Lease, published by Arnold Lease, 20 Pewley Hill, Guilford, Surrey. So that's just a quick synopsis of the Judaic threat in China. Dual citizenship, dual loyalties. Well, there is no dual loyalties. It's all a fake loyalty one way. A man cannot serve two masters. So they serve one master, and that is to bring about the oneness of God. So maybe China is finally shaking off its master. Maybe the golem is finally waking up. But I'm not confident in what they have to offer with their social credit score and their authoritarian hand either. Until next time.